tell me how old I am. 18? 15. 15, yeah, that's actually right. I am 15 years old. I know I don't look like it, so. Um, yeah, I'm at Lysetta High School. I'm a ninth grader. Uh, just started driving last September. Uh, thankfully, no, uh, there's, there's not been any crashes on the road near my house, so I'm actually a pretty good driver. So yeah, I get, um, I get probably the best two topics, Hajj and our two uh, holidays, Eid al-Fitr and Eid, Eid al-Adha. So I'm going to start with Hajj. So it's required uh, from every Muslim who is able, uh, physically and financially, once in a lifetime. Um, and it uh, commemorates all of the trials and events that happened to Prophet Abraham and his family. Um, there are about three million people who go every year. It's a really crowded place. My parents went there a couple years ago and they told me about it. Uh, really hot, lots of sweat. And <laughs> But it, they, they, like, they like the experience, actually. Um, it is the fifth and the last pillar uh, in Islam. And uh, Muslims believe that if, uh, if you go to Hajj with the right intentions and um, you do it purely and well, uh, your past sins will all be forgiven. And the reward is heaven. Um, and it takes place during the 12th lunar month in the Islamic calendar. And it is over a period of several days in the city of Mecca. Uh, the events include, there's uh, tawaf where you go around the Kaaba seven times praying. Um, you have to run between the two hills of Safa and Marwa as a um, commemoration to uh, Prophet Abraham's wife, how he, she had to do that while looking for water. And there's a bunch of stuff like that, just to remember his Abraham's struggles and to bring you closer to God. So uh, during Hajj, men are required to wear two pieces of simple cloth, which is called ihram, and it just re represents purity and equality. So basically, um, you can have a really rich person and a really poor person being next to each other, two different countries, two different uh, social classes, but they're wearing the same clothes praying towards the same God, just for representing that equality. Um, and the women, they're just, they don't have uh, as much as a requirement, they just have to wear um, proper Islamic clothing, like a head scarf and then a full length bodysuit, uh, covering all the way until the ankles and the wrists. Um, and it's just a really, really big event and it just represents the equality of all Muslims and just the coming together of all Muslims. Okay. So that uh, black cube in the back, um, I think a lot of you might know it. Uh, it is the Kaaba. It is what all Muslims pray to when they when we do our daily prayers, and it is. Um, the center of our tawaf when we go for Hajj, as you can see, all those people praying to it. Uh, it was built as an empty cube-shaped building by Prophet Abraham, uh, peace be upon him, and it's it is covered uh, with a black cloth. It's known as the House of God. Um, over time, after Abraham died, uh, polytheism started spreading in Mecca, and they started putting idols and statues outside and inside the Kaaba until Prophet Muhammad wasallam, peace be upon him, uh, came and uh, destroyed all the idols and brought monotheism back again. Today the Kaaba is empty and um, if you're lucky, when you go to Hajj, you might be able to go inside the Kaaba and pray, but it's, it doesn't usually happen. It's usually always closed because there's a bunch of people uh, crowding around on it. Also, there is the black stone on it, which is, um, said to be to come from heaven um and we believe that it is black because it's turned black from the sins of mankind over the period of uh, mankind so now uh i'm done talking about hajj now 